So hello everyone. Thanks very much for joining us in this session. Um, I would really like to encourage you to use the chat both to introduce yourselves to each other and also to ask any questions or uh, post comments um, as the uh, session progresses. Um, we've uh, pre-recorded our presentation this morning to avoid any issues with the chat. Um, so for the first session on archaeology and architecture in Europe, Europe Piana, um, I really wanted to include voices from our data partners so that you could hear them talking about their experiences and to give you a, an integrated uh, experience. Um, I've used a video recording. So um, I'm just going to, Tamara, if you would uh, start the recording session, uh, the play. Oh. In this session, we will talk about archaeology and architecture in Europeana. Effie Patsatsi will begin by giving you an overview of the types of content that you can find in Europeana. Then I will introduce you to Karari, Europeana's domain aggregator for archaeology and the architectural heritage, followed by four of our data partners speaking about their experiences of preparing, delivering and reusing content in Europeana. At the end of the session, there will be time for questions. Over to Effie. Europeana includes all aspects of the archaeological heritage. The content ranges in time from the Paleolithic to the modern era and includes the movable and immovable heritage, archaeological monuments, historic buildings, cultural landscapes, objects, reports and archaeological archives. And last but not least, you can see archaeologists at work. This is an example of an image from one of the collections that Carrara has helped to publish in Europeana. Now I'm going to show you some more of the brilliant archaeology content that you can find in Europeana, either through the general search or straight from the archaeology theme collection. Let's start with the Colosseum Castle, a medieval castle built in the 15th century. It was captured in 3D by the Cyprus University of Technology, who have made their model images and other documentation available via Europeana. The municipal assembly building in the center of Apatien in Serbia was designed by the famous architect Ferenc Reichel. It is representative of the succession style and was built between 1907 to 1909. This photograph of the manor house at Bishampton was taken around 1960 by Freddie and Mary Charles. Architects and internationally acclaimed experts in their conservation of timber frame buildings, the couple documented hundreds of such buildings in England during restoration projects. Now I'd like to show you some objects from museum collections. This ivory game piece from the Hunt Museum's collections is probably a dog's one and shows two animals. This three-legged bowl is typical of the El Algar culture and was excavated in the southeast of Spain by the Stuart brothers and later deposited at the King's Museum in Brussels. Here you can see a gold finger ring which dates to the Renaissance or early modern period. This amazing find was recorded by the Portable Antiquities Scheme of the Netherlands. Let's move on to take a look now at some of the 3D models. Ramon Montaner, a Catalan gentleman and writer, referred in his chronicle to the Castle of Onda and its world enclosure as of the 300 towers. The fortress was built by the Muslims in the 10th century on the ruins of ancient Iberian and Roman settlements. This cross stood at the junction of Market Street and Castle Street in Carroll's and became known as the, market, as the Market Cross. Originally, it is thought to have been a boundary cross marking the perimeter of the monastery. This historically correct animated 3D model of the 17th century waterway is based upon an excavation by the National Institute for Preventive Archaeological Research in the France, and a mill which has been physically reconstructed and is opened by the Gedelon Project in France.
Those were some examples of archaeological content Carrara has helped to publish. There are more than 2 million archaeology items to browse in European. Now I'd like to show you some examples of how the content is being reused in European galleries, blogs, and exhibitions, starting from galleries. This gallery depicts archaeologists during their daily work, digging, excavating, researching, observing, and also includes some interesting historic images as well as more recent activities. The creation and use of jewelry or types of personal adornment has been a part of human expression since prehistoric times. This gallery includes examples used to express wealth, status, amulets, and gifts to the afterlife. Cooking pots are some of the most common finds and excavations, and this gallery presents an overview of the tools and equipment we have used to prepare our food from the earliest archaeological finds to more recent technology. There are also quite a few blogs on Europeana which use archaeology content. This blog by Invitas Lausikas talks about the real paleo diet and what archaeology tells us about eating and drinking in the past. For Women's History Month, Carrara contributed a blog post sharing stories of a few pioneering female archaeologists from across Europe. Blogs can also be a good way of showcasing some of the highlights from their own collection, as in this blog from the Hunt Museum. The Iberian Iconography and Ritual Gallery focuses on the iconography shown in Iberian art and objects from archaeological research and what it says about the social structures, beliefs, and needs of the Iberians. An interesting case of content reuse is the Uncovering Hidden Stories exhibition, which has been created as part of the European Archaeology Project and introduces some of the fascinating archaeological monuments and finds that are preserved across Europe. It reveals stories of past landscapes and environments, urban planning and architecture, trade and migration, power and identity, as well as religion and funeral practices. Thanks very much, Effie. Now, I would like to introduce Carrari, which is Europeana's domain aggregator for archaeology and the architectural heritage. We've been aggregating for Europeana for more than 10 years and offer support and technical services to help institutions to share their content with Europeana. Carrari is a membership association. It's a network of people as well as providing aggregation services. We have members in national and regional heritage organisations, university research groups, specialist digital archives, archaeological museums, as well as creative companies specialised in 3D digitisation of the archaeological and built heritage. So I would like you to hear from a few of our members about their experiences of sharing content with Europeana. In a moment, you will hear Sean McKinnery of the Hunt Museum speaking about the role that digitisation plays in the museum's activities and the digital content that they delivered to Europeana via the Europeana Archaeology Project. Here we are at the Hunt Museum in Limerick City in the west of Ireland. Um, so it's a city with a strong medieval and Georgian history shown in beautiful architecture and heritage buildings of the city. And we also have a world-class collection uh, that I'd like to tell you just a little bit more about. Uh, so the collection is a diverse mix of Irish prehistoric archaeological material ranging from um, Mesolithic through to the Iron Age. And it includes a significant selection of um, Bronze Age items, um, also early Christian objects and um, a wealth of Irish and European medieval material. So I suppose with the diverse range of archaeological objects that we have, um, the opportunities for digital engagement are quite high, but um, before I tell you um, about how we did this, I just want to show you uh, what role digitisation plays in our museum in particular. Uh, so we believe that the modern museum needs to operate across three platforms. So the human uh, being the community, uh, the physical, um, the building itself, and I suppose the virtual. Um, so digitization is the platform that allows the physical collections um, of the museum to be connected to our audiences and communities. And hopefully that this will uh, help this connection in the longer term. 
So I want to throw, describe the role that uh, digitisation plays in our museum activities. Um, but I suppose this should be viewed as a practical case study rather than um, a kind of a how-to. Um, so looking at the three platforms, the physical is the historic building itself, but also our collections and objects. So we ensure that these are actively researched, uh, preserved and secured for our community and visitors to the museum. Uh, but our model for a modern museum also considers the positive role a virtual platform has in engaging educational audiences and the general public with the physical collection. Um, so we put digitization um, at the heart of our model, which means that it's embedded into the education and engagement um, activities of the museum. But we're moving away from a high level, and um, we want to show how this digitization strategy is demonstrated in our everyday operation of the museum and how Europeana uh, archaeology project has fitted so well into this. Um, so uh, firstly, um, it means that we can very simply um, digitize our collections and uh, place the majority of the information into the public domain and uh, allow access or encourage access um, uh, to the world, we hope, um, and encourage new research and hopefully active participation with the collection. But projects like uh, Europeana Archaeology um, have been a fantastic project for us. It allowed us to increase our digital capacity, improve our ability and skills uh, to share our cultural heritage with a wider audience. Um, but it also gives us the opportunity to learn from other institutions and project partners, their collections, and uh, most especially their expertise. So we contributed uh, 150 objects uh, from our collection in 2D format, and we enriched the information on these objects during the lifetime of projects. We also contributed uh, 50 archaeological objects in 3D, and our 3D digitization um, has been integral to us being able to use our collection um, in education activities, especially. And uh, I suppose we know that um, being involved in projects um, such as Europeana and the models uh, for the data that we've used, for example, the EDM, um, are effective when we see that our objects are searchable and centered into uh, curated galleries in Europeana, like uh, the sculpture. So how have we used our digitization, uh, our digitized collections for engagement? So we have run short 3D digitized, digitization days for community groups. Um, so this has encouraged outreach and engagement and resulted in a large number of objects being 3D digitized. This resulted in a forming of a community group in Limerick City. And um, they digitized using, using photogrammetry and then placed objects on a uh, sketch map. Uh, 3D digitized objects have also been used in other projects which try to bring the museum out of the building and into the cityscape. I'd like to tell you very quickly about two uh, projects, uh, Green Urban Museum 1 and Green Urban Museum 2. And uh, these are linked to projects funded uh, through City Exchange or Horizon 2020 initiative um, that aims to find smarter ways of planning cityscapes for living. So these uh, projects uh, aimed to green Georgian laneways in the heart of Limerick City and then using digitized objects uh, to be placed into the laneways um, these are accompanied by innovative technologies that encourage people to walk through these forgotten routes through the city. So the two pilot projects uh, both use digitized collections and together um, have been incorporated into a, a tourism loop of the city um, that highlight the historical significance um, of the laneways. So 2020 and COVID-19 obviously has been a challenge for all cultural institutions. So the importance of engaging with audiences uh, virtually became more and more important. And um, so the task was not just to increase the dig digital activities, but we, we also had to try and engage meaningfully. And for the Hunt Museum, this meant connecting with um, organizations um, on a local and national level and we did this through the um, museum from home uh, hashtag. So like many other institutions we geared up to convert a lot of our content online. We created new content and uh, a lot of this leaned heavily on our digitized collections. 
more generally, we also have connected uh, to platforms like Scan the World and Sketch Fab, which we believe uh, broaden the reach of the collection. And you know, platforms like these and Europeana obviously helps us to bring the collections out of the cabinet. I hope you're inspired by the work that the Hunt Museum is doing with their communities and collections. Next up is Michaela Burunia of the National Heritage Institute of Romania, speaking about a collection of aerial images of archaeological sites and how this was documented and shared with Europeana and some of the collection's research potential. We selected for the project 1,200 aerial images that document and illustrate that landscapes, archaeological sites and monuments from the southeastern region of Romania. The purpose of this photography campaign was to document sites, monuments and landscapes with the purpose of both scientific research and to increase the interest of the general public in certain cultural areas. These oblique images were done a few years back, from 2005 to 2010, captured from civil planes, but without a professional registration method for the site, which made them inaccessible for the large public and meant that we had to map, document, and add metadata for all of them. So we had this resource without context and with no perspective insights to publish it until the Europana project started. So how did we work for the project? Because the photos were taken without recording the coordinates, but only the flight track, each photo was passed through a mapping process. We started a GIS project where several cartographic resources were molded, topographical maps, satellite imagery, military aerial photographs, and we used Google Earth in parallel. So we established a data model for cataloging the photos, and the route of each flight was loaded in the GIS project and documented and compared with cartographic resources for confirmation. Then, we searched for common points in the cartographic resources to identify each photo and map it. And uh, the aerial photos were described, the captured area was analyzed in terms of landscape changes over a time sequence of 150 years. And as you can see, we have here a situation on the military map. Uh, here is the military map, and it's from the 20th century. And in the right side, we have the official vertical aerial photos from today. The construction of the Mihailish Dam, this dam, from the 80s completely changed the landscape and we can see that the Buddha locality here uh, disappeared under the waters. We registered the metadata scheme in the metadata scheme the sites and monuments captured by these photos. All aerial images are uploaded on our site and on our web map and waiting to be published in the Europana. This content is the result of our need to document the existing archaeological sites. Archaeological landscape photography, oblique or vertical, is important and can help in various academic research by adding valid information regarding what we know about settlement protection, for example, or population concentration. Uh, we use open data sets, like holding land cover, or naturally protected areas, Natura 2000, we establish standard types of land use and vegetation for the aerial images, and we map terms with geonames, AT, and Wikidata. It's fascinating to see how comparing aerial photographs to maps captures the changes in our landscape. In the next clip, you will hear Hella Hollander, Head of Archiving at Knorr Dans, speaking about an amazing collection of images of archaeological objects found by hobby archaeologist and metal detectorists in the Netherlands, which is now available in European. Uh, in EC, we have a, a, large, a large, sorry, large collection of supportable antiquities of the Netherlands, which is um, largely metal objects uh, done by, by metal detection of hobby archaeologists or individuals. But also, um, so this is a natural network and is led by the view of Amsterdam, the Free University of Amsterdam, and the National Heritage Agency in, based in Amersfoort. And Don was part of this network because we take care of long term preservation and the uh, dissemination towards European portals like Europeana and Ariadna, for instance. So there are a large collections, and since the, there's a change in legislation since 2016, it's allowed to look into the 30 centimeter of topsoil uh, by metal detectors. And monuments and excavations are not allowed to, uh, to be searched by. And to give you an example of the objects found, uh, this is, uh, for instance, this, these are finds from the Roman period. 
And um, in the gallery, we are uh, ready to publish in Europeana something will also be seen from this collection. So we have uh, this very huge community of non-professional archaeologists, actually. And they said, OK, we, we don't want to show the, the coordinates of, of the place where we found objects. It's, it's our place where we want to continue even uh, our search. And um, uh, it's a matter of trust also. So uh, uh, European responded, and, it, and they said, this can be easily uh, 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 fixed by adding in the mapping general area or undisclosed location. So um, the question and the answer, can I use this in Europeana, is the answer is yes, with condition. So uh, it's with the license uh, CC by non-commercial share alike. And over 40,000 objects are into the Europeana already. Uh, it's good to hear Hella describing how they built relationships with amateur archaeologists, enabling these important finds to be documented and shared on online platforms. In the next clip, you will hear Alberto Sanchez talking about how they shared their collection of monuments and objects from the Iberian period, from their databases right through to publication in Europeana, and giving a real insight into why this collection is so interesting. This presentation shows the fundamental principles, the work process, and the results obtained by the project developed by the University Research Institute for Iberian Archaeology of the University of Jaén within the framework of the Europeana Archaeology Project. Before starting, I would like to thank the work carried out by the members of the research team in Jaén both those who have worked on the Iberians and those who have a focus on medieval heritage. I would also like to acknowledge the help received from the European archaeology projects, especially from two culture associates and also from the Carrari Association. The first point to discuss are the aims that, following the project guidelines, had to focus our work. For us, there are several priority issues in order to obtain an interesting intellectual product for different audiences. The, fir the first place, and once the technical aspects of the search have been assured, the historical and archaeological information provided in the description of the heritage asset is the fundamental axis on which this work has been based. This information is what is really interesting for potential visitors to our collections, that is, students, young researchers, and tourists. We have tried to avoid totally positivist description and try to create relationships between archaeological objects and sites. In this sense, the links to other entries related to other objects or part of the same archaeological site should be accessible. Likewise, it has been ensured that the set of items collects the diversity of objects and archaeological context representative of each historical moment reflected in the two collections treated in our project. The descriptions of the most important heritage assets are written in Spanish and English. Bibliographic references, links, and where possible, a photo carousel have also been included. All images comply with Tier 3 required by Europeana. And we have made content available under CC license, attribution plus non-commercial. In the case of 3D models, the approach has been the same. Furthermore, in all our work, a good temporal and spatial definition has been crucial. In addition, and as a part of the project work, various dissemination activities have been developed. The first three, a gallery, a blog, and the collaborations in a virtual exhibition are being disseminated by Europeana. These three activities and the teaching seminar will be shown and discussed later. Two collections have been the main reason for our work. The image data bank for the teaching and dissemination of Iberian culture and medieval archaeological heritage of Eastern Andalusia. Before commenting on their contents, I would like to indicate the work process necessary to modify and incorporate both collections to Europeana. The process can be summarized in two phases. The first one focuses on the loading on information in our database 
and a second one designed to transfer this, this information to Europeana. In the first phase, our work was facilitated by the fact of adopting the Carrari metadata schema compatible with the European data model in our two databases. The second phase was designed for the ingest, ingestion, validation, enrichment, and provision of metadata to Europeana. We made use of the functionalities mean and mod. To match the entire technical process, we had the help of an external company and from two culture associates and from Carrari Association. Detected errors were corrected in our databases and a new XML file was ingested again in Mint. In reference to the first collection, it, it is a collection that already exists in Europeana, but modified and expanded. Since Europeana removed the information from the photos associated in the carousels, there was no point in them. Therefore, it was decided to reintroduce them as individual entries. Along with them, new archaeological objects and a structure were incorporated. This procedure was applied to 104 entries, from which 198 were obtained. Other new entries were added to these, including 32 3D models, up to a total of 502 entries. This collection offers a, book, a look at the Iberians, one of the most important culture of the Western Mediterranean between the 6th and the 1st century BC, and located in the east part of the Iberian Peninsula. The set of images and 3D models selected show a hierarchical and contextualized repertoire of the main Iberian heritage assets. Ceramic vessels, grave goods, graves, necropolis, exboats, sanctuaries, sculpture, houses, palaces, walls, and opida. The materials refer to various and interconnected areas of Iberian society. The ritual, expressed through sanctuaries, exboats, sculpture, and graves. The death with hierarchical funerary spaces and the fine rituals with cremation as a main part of a funeral ceremony, the work. Especially interesting is the participation of the Iberian in the Second Punic War, specifically in the battles of Baecula and Iliturgi. The power, the legitimation, and the clientele structure of the Iberian society revealed of this through the opida, singular buildings, palatial structure, necropolis, and the sculpture of heroes and aristocratic lineages. In addition, it is also important to note that special attention has been paid to the presence of women in the culture of the Iberians. Iberians women had an outstanding activity, not only domestic, but also in other productive tasks, and in ritual and religious ceremony. I hope that you've been inspired by this wonderful content. Kirari is very keen to encourage people to contribute new, high-quality archaeology content to Europeana and also to keep creating galleries and publishing blogs and thinking of new ways of reusing and sharing the content in Europeana with others. So if you have archaeological or architectural content that you would like to share with Europeana, Karari can offer advice and support on all the practical and technical aspects for metadata in Europeana's data model, rights and licenses, we can also offer specialised services on metadata mapping with archaeological vocabularies and sharing 3D content published on Sketchfab with Europeana. Thanks very much for your attention today, for joining us in this session. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them now, or please do get in touch with us by email, via our website or via Twitter. Uh, <clears throat> Great, thanks very much um, everyone for listening. Uh, does anyone have any questions? No, oh, I could victimize someone. Uh, Fiona Mauert, can you tell me what, if I were to ask you for your favorite archeology span collection in Europeana, could you pick one? Oh, that's really difficult. 
Hmm. Trying to think what my favorite one is. Um, I mean, I've worked with quite a few of them. Uh, I think 3D is a pretty hot topic at the moment. So I guess I would pick Sheer 3D uh, as my favorite one. Um, because I also think that that's a really interesting tool that was developed. So this one was part of a project um, for, for people who don't know um, called Share 3 d And um, this allows you to share Sketchfab models on your piano via Karare. So yeah, I think that's got to be my favorite one at the moment, but there are so many and you highlighted in the video, there are so many of the great collections that we have. So hopefully that'll be some good inspiration for people. Well, thanks, Fiona. <laughs> Does anyone else think it's so nice? It sounds so nice uh, in your background there, Kate. <laughs> oh, the birds singing. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, does anyone else have a favourite collection? Uh, of archaeology content or is anyone listening who has a collection that they would um, be interested in sharing? Oh, actually, I'm just looking at the questions in the chat now. Brenda O'Neill's asked, what exactly is Karari? Um, yes, we, we developed a metadata schema uh, to mediate between our um, institutions, uh, systems, and Europeanus data model. So the, the Karari metadata schema is uh, based on existing um, metadata scheme, schemas for the archaeological and architectural heritage. Um, so it places a strong emphasis on information about uh, the location of sites and monuments, their uh, period, their date and time, their uh, heritage character um, and um, we use this schema as a way of um, helping organizations to they can work with a schema that's familiar with them and we've mapped it to Europeanus data model so that we can automatically uh, generate metadata in the format that's used within Europeana itself. I hope that answers your question. Everyone else is very quiet. Um, I'm wondering, Kate, maybe we could uh, talk a little bit about um, what people can do or if they want to share their collections with you, like, is there anything they have to bear in mind in particular about the metadata they have in their repository or like the files or anything like that that you would recommend? Oh, thanks very much, Fiona. Um, yes, so the basic principles for sharing any content with Europeana, in fact, are that the uh, the digital content needs to be published online um, on your own website. It needs to be published under a license that um, allows us to understand how it can be reused and you need to have some metadata available to describe it. Um, the metadata can be quite simple. So we work with organisations that have um, relatively simple um, Dublin Core metadata with the title, a description of the object, some information about uh, the subject character of the content, um, its location in space, the time frame of the um, asset that's being described. Um, but for Europeana in particular, we need to have a pointer. So we need a URL or a URI which points to the place where that content can be found online. And that's the basic principle for sharing any metadata content with Europeana, whether it's archeological or uh, fashion or any other form of content. Uh, beyond that, then um, obviously within the archeology span domain, um, 
we like to make sure that the content is well described and we encourage people to use uh, control vocabularies to ensure that they're um, the subject character, the period character of the asset are um, easily understood. Um, uh, we encourage, because Europeana is an international platform, it's uh, taking content from organisations in many different countries. So the metadata is in many different languages. Um, we uh, work to make sure that the language of the metadata is labelled um, so that it can be um, switched and we can use allow users to use translation tools when they come to Europeana. Uh, we pay attention to the quality of the original digital files. So we ask people to work with higher resolution uh, content where it's possible for them to do so. And also to really think about opening access to their content so that it can be used by as many different audiences as it's possible to do. Um, I probably could speak for another 45 minutes about sharing metadata with Europeana. So um, I'm just looking sideways at the chat to see if there are any other questions. And I, I noticed Tom Miles is asking a question about how archaeological sites are map matched with artifacts in museums. And in a way, this is one of the big challenges for archaeology. Um, in that the archaeological sites are often described or normally they're described in a nationally maintained registered of uh, protected monuments and buildings. Um, so there'll be a description of the site which is available uh, from the country. Um, but archaeologists have this habit of traveling abroad to work on excavations. Um, or even sometimes they'll travel within their own countries. So you can find that the artifacts recovered from an excavation on the site are not in the, the neighboring museum, um, but in a different country altogether. And so one of the big challenges is actually uh, relating finds from, uh, from sites back to um, the descriptions of the monument. Um, themselves. And you heard uh, Alberto Sanchez speaking about um, how important he felt that was for the collection relating to Iberian archaeology. And they, they pay special attention to creating relationships between um, the objects from those sites and the uh, descriptions and the um, digitizations of the monuments themselves. Um, but in fact, some objects from uh, sites in Iberia are um, held in um, the King's Museum in Brussels. Um, so Europeana, in fact, can be a way of relating back collections which are now in one country, um, but actually relate to the archaeology of another. But it's, it's difficult to work through every piece of digital content and actually uh, recreate the relationships um, if they've been broken through historical activity. So, you know, when um, archaeologists in the 19th or early 20th century uh, have worked and they brought their collections back to base at, at their um, home museums, you know, it's hard to reconstruct those relationships to the original site. Uh, but Europeana is a great way of actually um, beginning to do that. Does anyone else have a question? Um, I don't have a question so much as a comment. I think that what you said about um, connecting objects from different uh, that are currently in different museums that came from the same site or even excavation is something that Europeana can do. And there are some nice galleries. I think there's one about um, Tutankhamun and that sort of thing, which can show you how you can bring together those artifacts um, in a digital way. And I think it's something that 
I hope in the future we will explore more because it's quite exciting kind of bringing things together in the digital space where that can sometimes happen uh, physically. Um, so that's great. Thanks so much. But yeah, I don't know, does anyone else have any more questions? Or Kate and I will just continue talking about uh, <laughs> metadata and your piano. <laughs> Well, I could ask if anyone here would be interested in the possibility of working with us on an archaeology gallery or a blog post. Um, there, are, there are really fun things to actually create and uh, we'd be really happy to actually work with you if you've got a topic that you're interested in or you've seen a piece of content that you're fascinated by. Do get in touch. So you can contact me at um, info at karari.eu um, or also kfernie at 27 at gmail.com. And in answer to Brenda's question, yes, I'm sure Vic, uh, Europeana will make the recordings of all these talks available after this. Um, I've actually already published this talk on Carrari's Vimeo channel, um, so you can listen to it there as well. If I'm really sensible, I'll publish the link to our Vimeo channel and then you can take a look. So maybe I could ask one last so, question, Kate, can I? What's, sure. What's your background? What's this a picture of? I can't quite see the see the, um, the caption so it's um it's a drawing of the um the tombs at luxor oh nice it's a it's a beautiful uh, pencil drawing of the tombs at luxor and uh it's come from a collection not aggregated by karari so um there is lots of amazing content coming to Europeana via the archives and libraries and other museums, which is interesting for archaeology. Um, 